we're gonna run through some of Jason's machinery, a big jaw crusher, a big impact mill, and then a shaker table. Okay, we'll start the generator up here. It's gonna go fast. It's gonna go fast, okay. That took under one minute to run one bag. Fast, huh? And there's that quartz vein. Again, under a minute to run one full bucket through this machine. Is this a speck of gold waking its way down? Uh, it might be. But look at that. Beautiful lines of sulfides coming all the way down. Jason's just helping out getting the sulfides into the number one there. Look how much. There's pounds, pounds of sulfides here. And there we are. Ones and twos. Those must be heavy. <laughs> Feel how heavy they are. There's that yep. one, I mean, I'm gonna put that one on top. <laughs> <laughs> Almost dropped it. Heavy, heavy. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the number ones out of all three. We're gonna smelt those down and see how much gold. And we do know just from watching this that you know in the number twos, there's twice as much material, absolutely. And if we went to the number threes, which is out on the machine still, uh, I would say we probably put you know even twice as much of that of sulfides in it. So I'm thinking that this is about you know one sixth, one seventh of the sulfides that we could have got from each run. And that gives us a rough enough number that if we smelt this and figure out how much gold's in it, we can guess overall how much each sample would have had. It's a very rough guess, but what do you think? I think that's a great idea. I think, I think the whole point here is to get that order of magnitude. We're looking, is it a tenth of an ounce, one ounce, or 20 ounces per ton, and this will get us in that ballpark. Yeah. I agree. And that way also our, our first smelt of each one is going to be a reasonable amount rather than this huge amount of sulfides. Perfect. Let's do it. All right. Look at this. I get to see the shop that we see so often in Jason's videos. This is an awesome work area. And there's the kiln we'll be using for smelting in today. Jason is getting things ready for our first smelt. Oh. If you want to know more about smelting in general, Jason has a lot of videos on his channel about all the process, why it works, how it works, what you use for fluxes, everything you need to know. We're not going to explain that today, we're just going to do it. If you want to know that stuff, go check out his channel. I also have some videos on my channel too. 37 grams, so there's about 30 grams roughly without the water weight, so that's how much we're dealing with. So our material weighs about 30 grams, and I like to do about a two to one flux ratio. So I'm gonna add 45 grams of soda ash and 15 grams of silica sand. And I'm also gonna add a little bit of this lead oxide as a collector metal. That'll get us a nice little button at the bottom, if everything goes right, I'm gonna add maybe 20 grams of this so we can get enough of a button. Maybe 30, we'll add 30. We're gonna add iron to the smelt. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and reduce all the sulfides to either metal or iron sulfide, FES. And we've made our slag a very basic slag so the slag will absorb the FES, all the metal will collect at the bottom, and then we can pour the slag into our cone mold and get our button. Perfect. Okay, we'll start our kiln here. So I do a little bit of propane. Pour it a little bit. Oh. We'll add more air and get it real hot. Perfect. A little over a thousand Celsius. What's the target temperature? About 1200. 1200. About 11 to 1200. Looking good. Damn, 
the hands hot. Ugh. Time to get the mold ready. <laughs> Good luck! quartz vein sample and it came out there we go and where's our lid i think no there, oh, there it is there it is i got a nail in there <laughs> <laughs> let's break this off of there, there we go. there's a lead bead krill i should say yep and Hot. nope i can hold it there we go our lead prill time to put that in a coupel get rid of the lead and see what kind of precious metals is left over. And this is a, a very basic slag, but you can see the, the lead separated from the slag very nicely. There's no matte phase. There's no sulfides left over. The slag did its job. And it's kind of an ass ears dream to have lead and slag with nothing else other Perfect. than that nail in there. <laughs> All right, we'll go put that in our furnace and burn that lead off. All right, let's put our lead prill into a coupel, heat it up. Let the lead turn into lead oxide, which it gets absorbed by the cupel. And leaving the precious metal behind. Our next sample is inside, boiling away, heating up, doing its thing. There we go. It's molten, it's yeah. doing its thing. So we'll leave the door cracked a little bit. Let some oxygen in there. Let that oxidize. Got it, it's a little too full. And that's the good one. Sample number three is where we have most of our hopes. This bead should oh, all... You got a little bead! I see a bead of gold! <laughs> Oh, we need to cool that off and get a close-up on it. Yeah, let's, that's exciting. Let's pull that out. There's a bead of gold on the worst sample of the three. Not only the worst, it's also the smallest. Ooh, exciting. There we go. Still very hot, but that is the bead of gold from the first smelt, sample number one. There, now it looks more like gold. Our first little bead of gold. It's so pretty. Jason says we're ready to pour the next sample, and it's a big one. Should fill the cone mold mostly completely. There's the big pour from the 
Midway Mine, the big sample. I'm hoping for lots of gold in that. I think I fried my camera a little bit. <laughs> I melted the microphone cover of my GoPro. There was a lot of radiant heat there. I know, you're supposed to let these things cool on their own, but oh well, we're impatient. Here we go with our second. Nice, and look at that, it broke off the top perfectly. There we go. There you go. Broke off nicely. Yep, no sulfides in there. It's all pretty much slag. Much bigger prill this time, much bigger. Clean off. What is that, like five or six times the Whoa. size? Oh, what happened there? It broke. It broke in half. What? <laughs> that's very hard and brittle. There's our mat phase. Well, that's very odd. I wonder what is going on there. We end up with a lot more iron in this than we yeah. expected, wanted. Yeah, so there's our lead. Okay. That's our nice lead. That's where most of the gold will be and silver. But here's that matte phase I was telling you we don't want. And so we might, if we get ambitious, we might reprocess this to see if there's any left over. Okay. But my experience has been, even if you get a little matte phase, the gold is still the gold almost is, all in there. Exactly, exactly. So we'll put that in our furnace and get the lead out and see how much gold and silver we got. Perfect. So we will be putting that prill in a much bigger coupel this time to absorb all the lead and give us a gold. There we go. Get some oxygen on that. It'll be done in no time. Looks like it's just about to flash off. Yeah. It's right on the edge. And I still see a little bit of oxidation swirling on the, around. On the top, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that bead is definitely, you know, 10 times the size of our first one. And very silver in color. Yes. I think there was a lot more silver in that load. Mm hmm. But that's what we said about this one when it first came out too, and it was really silver. That's true, it looked very silver, and then as it cooled... It went yellow. One of the indications of very pure silver is it will get silver sprouts when it cools. Oh yeah. And I don't see any silver sprouts on this, so it's not pure silver, but it, it does, have, does have a little dimple in the right in the top. Well, I can't get in too close yet, because it's still really stinking hot. But there's our bead. Now we had a bit of an overflow here, but that would have been the glass slag up on the surface overflowing, not the heavy lead. The heavy lead will have gone straight to the bottom. So don't think we're losing a lot with what's down there. It'll be fine. The good stuff is still in there. Dan and I will both try and film the surface of the sun here at the same time. If I use you as a shadow. There we go. How's that? We had some glitches along the way with that prill. We've got it out now. Jason's putting it into the kiln. We're gonna coupel it, including two nails. But those will come out once we, um, you know, get it molten. Oops, there were a few oopses there. Just about ready with our third and final bead. It's just about to go off. 
and it does look like it's bigger than the last. Maybe? I see a little bit of oxidizing still going on, but not very much. And it's done. Let's pull it out and have a look. Yes, it is bigger than number two, but looks just as silver. Lots of silver content in with that gold. Time to start weighing these up. Here's the tiny little bead from the quartz seam, that's sample number one. Remember this comes from about 20 kilograms of material, although again, remember there's about one seventh of that material. Here's the bead from sample number two, the north vein, and this was from about 50 kilograms, but again, this is, you know, one seventh of that 50 kilograms. The one that is still stinking hot, there's the third bead from the south vein. And again, this was from about 50, actually about 45 kilograms of material. But again, one seventh. Let's get those weighed up and see what we got. And the little, little guy is 0 0.032 grams. And sample number two comes out to 0.492, half a gram from sample two. And bead number three comes out to 1.23 grams, so definitely much bigger, but we can tell from its color it's a much higher silver content. Again, I'll do the math here on the screen for you. Now that brings us to the end of another great adventure, starting off with Jason from Mount Baker Mining and Metals coming up to Canada and checking out the Midway Mine, ending off with me coming down to Washington here, down the US, to process those materials. I had a great time. We got some really nice results, and I had a blast with Jason down in the States playing with his mining equipment. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave me that thumbs up. If I haven't earned your subscription already, I hope I earned your subscription today. And a big thanks to everyone for watching, especially my patrons. Because of the support of my patrons, I get to make these weekly episodes of Dan Hurd Prospecting. Hope you're all having an amazing day. And until the next one, bye! Bye! Thanks guys for watching! <laughs>